Mobile bathrooms have given the homeless of San Francisco a real sense of dignity. Denise Sandoval joins me now to talk a little bit more about this really exciting, innovative project on wheels. <laughs> Tell us about it. So um, Lava May is essentially a mobile hygiene bus that has, it's a, they're retired and decommissioned public transportation buses that we have gutted and turned into two complete bathrooms with shower, toilet, sink, and a small changing area. The unit in the front is actually fully ADA compliant because the buses came um, with wheelchair lifts. And also 68% of the population suffers some form of disability, so we wanted to be able to be sure to accommodate their needs. Um, we're mobile in the sense that we find a location where we have another nonprofit partner offering additional services, and we are there for a six to eight hour shift. So two hours of setup on either end and then six hours of showers and we can serve 42 people in that six hour period. So you, so you take the bus and you take it to a, a, a location mm -hmm. and then people can come in and shower. Yes. So how, how much does the water supply sustain for that so the interesting so thing is I use a lot of water. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and women use more than men, <laughs> yes. Um, we do not carry water on board because it, it would destabilize the bus. So we have right. a special relationship yeah, right. with the city right. so to tap right. into the white top fire um, hydrants. And we actually use very so use little water. So fire hydrant water. We, and it's totally potable. You can drink it. Really? <laughs> yes. So what if there's a fire? Well, so there's three types of fire hydrants. If you'll ever notice, there's a, usually a white top, a blue top, and a red top. And we are not allowed to use blue or red because that's the fire department. But we and the commercial contractors and whatnot tap into the white topped fire hydrants. And how many uh, homeless actually use your shower services? And are you providing soap and towels? And yes, we provide them with everything. So we, as of, uh, we just finished our pilot program in December, where on a very limited schedule, we gave 1,300 showers to 699 people, which means we're seeing a fair number of regulars, which is great. So we're serving a lot of people who have jobs, but can no longer afford to live in shelter. Uh, they're in their cars or they're on their wow. streets. Um, we serve a lot of people who were just recently evicted, young families, you know, returning veterans, women's esca women escaping domestic violence. Um, but our goal is to be able to accommodate as much of the 3,500 men, women, and children who actually live, physically live on the streets of San Francisco. That's wonderful. How did you think of this? <laughs> Did you one day need a shower and you were on a bus? And <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> every sh no, no. Yeah. Um, I had been really concerned with the issue of homelessness for uh, quite a while yeah. and been trying to think of a way to make a difference. And literally one day I passed a young woman who was sitting on the street who was filthy and who had a little mental illness. You could tell when she was sitting there crying and saying over and over again that she would never be clean. And I knew that that probably meant oh, wow. layers of things that I would never know about, but I just wondered what her chance was for getting physically clean. So that night I went home and I did the research, and that's when I found out that there were 16 actual shower stalls and about as many bathrooms available to the 3,500 people on our streets. Wow. Yeah. What do you think is the question each woman has to ask herself? That's the most important question. In terms of making a difference? In terms of how you see life. Oh my to, gosh. to narrow it down. Yes, that's a big one. I think that you have to figure out how to love as best as you can, like how to give the most of yourself because really it is, it's so trite, but in giving back you get so much more than you ever can put out and it has to come from a place of love. I love that one of the speakers reminded me today that the opposite of love is not hate. It is indifference, and only in loving, fully loving, I think, can we conquer the world's problems. And I think even every person in the most tiniest way can make a big difference to creating a world that is better. What do you think is the top issue that women in San Francisco, or in where you live today, face? Oh my gosh, uh, let's see. Um, you know, San Francisco is sort of the, the heart of creativity, technology, innovation, all of that. But I think like women all over the world, there is still massive inequality in terms of opportunity. Um, even if you're homeless, the differences that you face are astounding by comparison. So women who are homeless are much more likely to be raped or to be attacked or, 
um, when it comes to hygiene, they have to deal with many more issues than men would ever have to deal with. So I think there's just this incredible breadth of inequality that we in 2015 still have not managed right. to overcome. And finally, what is the best advice you've ever received? <sighs> to really be true to yourself, right? So there are competing voices all the time for how you should live your life and what you should do, but finding your path and having the courage to stick with it even when outside forces say don't do that or when you have internal doubts but if it's something that you're really passionate with to continue that Sisyphus, what it feels like Sisyphus sometimes rolling that ball up the hill right. but if it's your calling then just stay true to that. That's wonderful. Thank you so much Denise. Thank you for having me.